Hello. So in this video, we're looking at an example um, where it's not clear the particular thing we want to use. So part of this is sort of explaining the keywords or things to look out for to know the technique that we want to use. Um, but sort of on the face of it, what we're asked, right, we're given this function f of x is 1 third x squared minus 5 to the x plus 1. And we want to know if this intercepts the line y equals 1 on this interval, negative 3 to 3. So the key sort of word or the key phrase we want to look at here is this is asking specifically, does this function intercept the line? Meaning that it's not asking where it intercepts the line. It's not asking for a point. It's asking for existence. Does this thing happen? Yes or no? Doesn't ask how many times it happens. Doesn't ask where it happens other than it wants to know whether it's happening somewhere in this interval, but not specifically. It's not like, you know, give the x value where this happens kind of deal, right? And this is actually like a really, really big distinction. This is really important. So I want to notice it asks for existence of the solution. Not for an actual solution, right? It's not asking me what is the x value where that works. It's asking me, does it exist? So the reason this is important is that this opens up the avenue for using existence uh, theorems, theorems that tell you a thing exists. And in particular, this lets us use, this is a big clue, to use the intermediate value theorem, IVT, intermediate value theorem. So remember what the intermediate value theorem says is that essentially if you have a function that is continuous and you know two y values that it hits, that between the x values where it hits those things, it has to hit everything in between, okay? So in particular then, if I could take my function and show A, that it's continuous, which it clearly is, right? I know this thing is continuous. Um, and I can show that it is both, you know, at, at a certain x value in this interval, it's below y equals one, and another one, it's above y equals one, that would be enough to tell me then that it has to hit y equals one somewhere between those values. And really at this point, there's no need to be sort of overly clever with the way this question is, is uh, designed or, or you know, written. It asked me about the interval negative three to three, so I might as well try those as my first points. So my strategy then, so I'll maybe mark this over here, strategy. Compute f of 3 and f of negative 3. And I'm doing this hoping to find uh, that one of these things, f of 3 or f of negative 3, is less than one and the other is greater than one. And I'm hoping that this is going to happen because if I can show one of them is less than one and one of them is bigger than one, right, then by the intermediate value theorem, there's a point between negative three and three where it has to equal one because it's a continuous function. And that tells me that it does indeed intercept that line. 
which is all the question's asking for. It's not asking me where it intercepts, right? This is really important. This works because it doesn't ask me where. It's only asking if, right? Okay, so let's try that. So let's first look at f of 3. And moreover, really all I care about is whether or not it's less than 1 or bigger than 1. So I don't really need to like fully calculate it out. I, I can, and I will, but all I really care about is whether it is less than 1 or greater than 1. So I only really need to go that far if I'm doing this. But let's, let's go all the way anyway. So f of 3, 1 third x squared minus 5 to the plus 1. This is going to be 9 times 1 third, or 9 over 3 is 3, minus 5 to the 4th. So clearly 5 to the 4th is way bigger than 3, so this is less than 0. So in particular, definitely less than 1. Um, I could, again, I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, 5 to the 4th, that's 25 squared, so that's going to be 625. So this is 3 minus 625, which is negative 622, which again is clearly less than 1. <laughs> right. A lot less than 1, but clearly less than 1. In contrast, f of negative 3, well, it's going to be 1 third times negative 3 squared minus 5, negative 3 plus 1. This, again, is going to be positive 9, right? Negative 3 times negative 3, divided by 3. So this is, again, going to be 3, minus 5 to the negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So remembering how negative exponents work, this is going to be 1 over 5 squared, meaning this is some really small fraction less than 1. So 3 minus something less than 1, this is actually obviously going to be greater than 1. Again, I'll, I'll calculate it out, but this is, that's what I care about. right? So I could stop there if I've noticed this, but I'll continue calculating it. So this is 3 minus 1 over 5 squared, so that's 1 over 25, uh, which is going to be, I guess, 74. right? So common denominator, that's 75 over 75, minus 1 over 25, I'm sorry, 75 over 25. Minus 1 over 25 is 74 over 25. Or for those that like decimals, I guess that's what, 2.96. But the point is, it is greater than 1. Okay. And really, this is what I need, right? So since f of 3 is. Uh, f of 3 was, sorry, less than 1, less than 1, f of negative 3 is greater than 1, and, and this is important to include, and f of x is continuous on that interval, negative 3 to 3, 5, the intermediate value theorem, there exists an x such that, I'm just abbreviating because I'm running out of space here, such that, um, so I could even be sort of specific, this is an x0, meaning that a specific x, right, not just a general x, there's some specific x but importantly, I don't know what it is. I can't write down the number, so I have to denote it somehow. I'm calling it x sub 0. So there exists an x0 such that that thing equals 1, which is right exactly what my, my problem asked for. So as a recap then, right? so I'm given this thing, and it's worth a note here. Like You might be like, asking, okay, but like, why not just find the x value? Why all this crazy talk and why use this annoying abstract existence theorem? And the answer is because actually solving this thing would be really hard. Like the, the point where this thing exists is something like negative 1.9192 and then a bunch of other stuff. So like, it's a, 
it's it's not an obvious number, and there's not a nice way to solve for it algebraically. It's actually really hard to solve this problem. But the giveaway about sort of how I should go about this problem is that it's only asking, right? It's only asking, does right? Does this function um, intercept the line? So it's not asking where it intercepts the line. It's asking if it if that intercepts the line. That's the that's the key. Is it's asking about existence. And that should be like a little light bulb that goes off in your head and says, ah, this is probably something to do with something like the intermediate value theorem that tells me that there is a point, there exists something somewhere that has that property. And so I want to use the intermediate value theorem, but to use that, I need to know the function is continuous. So I have to you know, make note of that. I need a point, an x value, where I know I'm sort of above my target an x value where I know I'm below the target, and that tells me that somewhere between those x values, I have to hit the target. And there's no reason being overly clever, so since it gave me negative three to three, that's where I would start with. So I plugged in three, got something below my target. Plugged in negative three, got something above my target. So that tells me between negative three and three, I have to hit the target by the intermediate value theorem. Okay, so that is how you would use the intermediate value theorem.